Hey folks, hope you're doing okay. It's time for time for some financial algebra. Uh, hope you guys are doing all right with the with the whole uh, social distancing thing. Um, I think that term's gonna be. Hopefully someday it'll be funny. Uh, anyway, I'll get into it here. Um, so plan for the week, you guys, is I'm basically gonna post this video. Hopefully it's pretty short uh, and some notes to accompany it. Uh, notes are gonna be. Notes are going to be posted on Google Classroom and filled in, and then there's going to be a Desmos activity as well, and that's going to be graded. And the notes are kind of what's going to help you on the Desmos activity. Uh, so what we're going to be starting is uh, probability. Uh, we're going to be talking gambling and games of chance and all that kind of stuff. Um, before we get to that, and I'm going to be kind of looking away from the camera here as I'm trying to present and pull different things up. But before we get to that, you guys, um, I don't know if you've been paying any attention to the stock market, but <clears throat> that's been doing some things. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, remember that's kind of a gauge of how the whole stock market is doing. That's up today, it's up about 6%. Um, but looking at what it's been doing over the last couple months since this whole, since this whole COVID-19 thing's been going on, um, it was back on, it might be a little tough to see, but hopefully you guys can see that it was on uh, February 12th. It was at an all-time high of about 29,550. Um, and you can see what it's done since then. It uh, kind of bottomed out here at 18,500. I'm not an expert, but I think it's going to end up going lower than that. Uh, it's had some pretty wild day-to-day -day swings. Like today, it's up 6%, which is kind of kind of crazy. Um and it's been bouncing around quite a bit, but uh, keep an eye on that interesting stuff. And um, you know, uh, if you're playing the stock market game, you can possibly take advantage of that. Um, and I got that linked on Google Classroom. So that said, you guys, I'll get into the first set of notes here for probability. Uh, so our learning target, you guys, is <clears throat> probability, relative frequency, and expected value. So we're working on calculating those three things and some terms here. So uh, I'm just going to kind of type, and uh, you guys can watch me fumble around with the keyboard a little bit here. Uh, hopefully I can get through this pretty quickly. But again, you guys, the completed notes are going to be posted on Google Classroom. So first of all, in general, I'm, well, I'm sure most of you guys have had probability in some way uh, in the past. So we're just going to kind of recap and start pretty slow this week. So probability, you guys, is basically it's the likelihood of something happening. That's it. Uh, so I'm going to put some equations in here, and uh, I'm going to be coding these in, so it's going to look a little funky until I render them. Uh, so probability. So to calculate probability, <clears throat> that's equal to, uh, and again, this is going to look a little strange as I code it in. Um, so it's, it's our desired outcomes, the thing we want to happen. And like in the case of games of chance, it's those things that can happen that make us win. So it's going to be our desired outcomes. Again, the things we want to happen and it's fraction. So it's going to be desired outcomes divided by all possible outcomes. And this can be, uh, can be a little tricky to calculate uh, because you got to count all of these things. And that's kind of what we're going to be getting into over the next few weeks. So I'll render the equation. It's going to take just a second, but then the fraction will pop up here. Okay, so probability, uh, it's the things that could possibly make us win, those things that we want to happen divided by all of the possibilities. So relative frequency, you guys, it's a similar thing. It's also a fraction, but a, a little bit different. So when we're talking about a game's, game is chance, uh, relative frequency is going to be like the number of times we've won divided by the number of times we've played. Um, that might seem like the same thing, but I'll kind of talk about the, the subtle difference in a, in a second here. Oops. 
So again, that's going to be um, again a fraction. And it's going to be the times that we won divided by the times we played. And again, it's going to be a fraction. Okay, so below here I have the difference between probability and relative frequency. Very similar things. They're both fractions. And they are, again, calculating fairly similar things. Um, so here's, here's the big difference, you guys. Probability is theoretical. Okay, well, relative frequency is actuals. It's what happened. Space there. So below there, you guys, I have uh, probability is what should happen, and relative frequency is what did actually happen. Okay, so if you're playing a game of chance or doing anything uh, a whole bunch of times, you know, if, you, if you only do it a few times, um, what you expect to happen and what actually happens aren't going to be the same. So probability and relative frequency, they're not going to be exactly the same. But if you do something enough, uh, there's going to be a negligible difference between the two. Meaning, if you do something hundreds or thousands of times, that relative frequency and probability are basically going to be the same thing. <clears throat> okay. So... What does that mean for players against chance? Well, essentially, um, if you play something enough, you're going to lose. Because those games are set up for the casino to make money, so the probability is that you're going to lose more often than you win, and you might get lucky with go. Uh, once, but if you play enough, you're going to lose. Like people that play the lottery all the time. Over time, they're going to end up losing a bunch of money. Okay, so some terms here, you guys. Uh, and these are just to kind of help us out. Um, sample space is when we're doing something, when we're playing a game, a sample space is all possible outcomes. So, <clears throat> like, if we're flipping a coin, um, the sample space, and you can kind of think of the sample space as it's the numeric total of everything that could happen. So if you're flipping a coin, the sample space is two. Okay, and that's obviously right, heads or tails. Okay, now if we're rolling a single six-sided die, the sample space there, right, six. And it's the digits one through six. Okay, so the probability of any event in a sample space occurring, there's a little bit of logic here, and this can get kind of confusing, but the probability of basically Anything happening is one or a hundred percent. Meaning, if you play a game or flip a coin or whatever, roll a die, like something's going to happen. So, for example, the probability of flipping heads or tails is one. Like, right? You're going to get one of the two. I know if you if you flip a nickel, though, it's about one in six thousand times about an American nickel it'll land on its side. 
let's, let's assume it's not a nickel though. <clears throat> All right, so uh, there's, there's sample space. Some probabilities related to that. Remember, sample space is just everything that could happen. You gotta be able to count everything that could happen to be able to accurately calculate probability. So now we'll get into independent and dependent events. Okay, so guys, independent events, and this is important in games of chance. So independent events um, are events where previous outcomes don't affect current events. So previous outcomes don't affect what's happening now. So again, previous outcomes, like an example of that is flipping a coin. All right, so what happened, like with a coin, if you flip a tail, the next time you flip, that has no bearing on your next flip, right? It's still 50-50, heads or tails. Okay, so dependent events then are, as you would imagine, that's where previous events do affect future outcomes. So a good example of that is playing cards, like dealing cards. All right, so think about playing blackjack, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with blackjack, but we can blackjack. Uh, <clears throat> the best hand to get is a face card or a 10 and an ace. So like if somebody gets an ace in front of you, your chances of getting an ace are lower because of that ace already being dealt. Okay, so those previous events, those previous cards affect the probability of what happens to you. like dealing cards or playing cards, dependent events. Okay, so those are just a few probability terms. Uh, next, you guys, we're gonna talk about expected value. And expected value is really important for people who play games of chance. So expected value, guys, is uh, the anticipated long run gain or loss. Okay, so in terms of gambling, the EV or expected value is how much you stand to win or lose over time. Okay, so our formula here <clears throat> for expected value, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So if you take the cost to play the game, Actually, what we want to do there, sorry. So our expected value, um, we're going to subtract the cost to play the game. So uh, what we're going to do, you guys, is we're going to take the probability of winning, okay, times the prize if we win. Okay, and then we're simply going to subtract the cost to play the game. Okay, so really straightforward here. Uh, when there's only one prize, when there's multiple prizes, it gets, it gets a little more complicated here. So uh, let's do this one. Cost to play, a game costs $4 to play. There's a one third chance of winning $10. So what's the expected value? All right, guys, so our expected value, like, Per time you play this game, what can you expect to win or lose in the long run? Uh, so our expected value for this one, you guys, we're going to take our probability of winning, which is a one out of three. Okay, we're going to multiply it by the prize if we win, which in this case is ten dollars, and we're going to subtract the cost to play, so four dollars. All right, so when we do that, we take one third times that ten dollars, we get. $3.33. Okay, so we subtract that $4 then. So basically what this means is that this is going to be a negative number. 
Okay, so that expected value is negative 67 cents. So what that means is, obviously we can't lose 67 cents in that one time that we play the game, but uh, what that means is that uh, in the long run, we can expect to lose 67 cents per time play. Right. If you play a few times, you might win money. But if you play this game long enough, you're going to lose, on average, 67 cents for every time you play. Okay, guys, so I'll uh, do quickly do some practice exercises, and then uh, that'll be it. All right, guys, so sample space for a roll of a single six-sided die. Again, that's six. Okay, so the sample space in this case is just six. Next one, you guys, what's the probability of rolling a five? Well, there is only one five, so our answer there. It's just one out of six, right? There's six possibilities in our sample space. One thing is going to make us successful. Next one, you guys, what's the probability of rolling a two or a five? Well, in this case, Two things can make us successful. So our answer there is going to be two out of six. <clears throat> Next one, you guys, what's the sample space for two consecutive coin flips? Well, the sample space there, you guys, uh, there's, in this case, for the first flip, there's two possible outcomes. For the second flip, there's two possible outcomes. So our sample space For this one, you guys, it's going to be four, okay? And right, the four things that could happen, right? We could get heads, heads. We could get heads, tails. We could get tails, heads. Or we could get tails, tails. Those are the only four things that can happen. And again, if you take two times two, because there's two things that could happen on the first one, two on the second one, you can get that answer. So now, now what's the probability of flipping two consecutive heads with the tail? with a coin, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> or you can see from the previous, right, there's only one way that can happen. So that's just a one out of four, right? That would be this, there's four possibilities. There's one of them that's heads, heads, one way that'll make us successful. So our probability there would be one out of four. All right, guys, number six, what's the sample space for rolling two six-sided dice? Well, this is gonna be Anytime you're rolling two dice, right? So it's six possibilities on the first die, six on the second one. So we're gonna multiply those together. Uh, some people kind of they have an idea that this is twelve, but I'll show you guys um, all the stuff that could happen. <clears throat> it's right here, and if we think of right having we're gonna roll two different die. One of them's red, one of them's white. These are all the different things that could happen, okay? So if you roll a one, you can get one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. You could roll a two and get two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, six, et cetera. All right, so there's 36 different possibilities and there's your whole sample space. All right, next one, you guys. What's the probability of rolling a sum of two with two six-sided die? So sum of two, there's only one way that can happen, right? We got to get a one and a one. So our probability there for a sum of two is one out of 36. There's 36 things that could happen. Right, here's our whole sample space. And to be successful, we got to get just that two. So the probability of rolling a sum of seven. So on the diagonal here are all the different ways we get a seven in there. So we get six, one. Five, two, four, three, three, four, two, five, or one, six. Okay, so there's six ways we could do that. So our probability for getting a seven is six out of 36. Okay, so <clears throat> way higher probability of getting a seven than 
a two. All right. Uh, maybe some of you guys have heard of the casino game. Perhaps that's where you roll two dice. And there's different ways you can win in this game. On the first roll, if you get a seven or 11, you win. So like, say you bet $5. If you get a seven or 11, you, know, you give the casino five bucks, they'll give you $10 back. So you basically double your money. Okay, so what's the probability of winning on the first roll? So the probability of getting a seven or 11. Well, we already know there's six different ways you can get a seven. So now let's look at 11. So 11 is a six and a five or a five and a six. So there's six ways to get a seven, two ways to get an 11. So our probability there would be eight out of 36, right? We got six and two. Okay, and then the last one, you guys, little <clears throat> expected value problem. So a lot of your game has picked three numbers. Those numbers are one, two, and three. The numbers cannot be duplicated. The game costs $5 to play and pays $20 if you match all three numbers in order. Okay, so what's the sample space? Well, a couple different ways uh, you can think about this, but the way that I like to think about this, you guys, is um, when I pick the first number, I have three different choices, right? I can pick one, two, or three. Now, the numbers cannot be duplicated, so the next time I pick a number, I only have two choices. And then that third number, I don't really have any choices, so my sample space there is six. Okay, so there's six different things that could happen. And uh, we have a one out of six of winning this game. <clears throat> So the expected value, you guys, right, remember it's the probability of winning, which in this case, right, there's six different things that could happen and we gotta match whatever was picked. So it's gonna be one out of six. Game costs $5 to play and you could win 20. And then we're gonna subtract $5 to play. Okay, so if we take basically 20 divided by six, what is that, Three, $3.67, I think. Just doing this off the top of my head here. Uh, so one sixth of 20 is $3.67. So we stand to win $3.67 every time we play, but the game costs $5 to play. All right, so our expected value, like if we, I don't know, maybe some of you guys know these people, like they play the lottery every single week. Their expected values aren't very good, uh, except for we'll, we'll talk about a certain case in, in a little bit. So, whoops. So, you stand to lose $1.33 every time you play. So, the game worth it? No, the game is not worth it. Players stand to lose $1.33 per time played. Play this game a thousand times, you can expect to lose $1,330. Good stuff. Okay, guys, uh, that'll be it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna stop presenting here. Um, if you have questions, you can post them in the comments section. Again, I'm gonna have the notes in the video posted together. And uh, the classwork, that'll be under the classwork tab is going to be a Desmos assignment that'll be graded. Again, let me know if you have questions. You can email me or post them in the comments. Take care. Hope you guys stay safe.